everyone, Jane Samantha here bringing you yet another video. Oh my God, it's yet another episode of Iconic Brunettes. Yes. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to bring you today this week's Iconic Brunette, Maria Felix. Ooh, yes. The queen of the silver screen of Mexico. Yes. Her life is right up there with Elizabeth Taylor as far as tragedy and success goes, okay? She's like Mexico's Elizabeth Taylor. Now, she was born to a very large family in Alamos, Mexico, and she is one of 16 siblings. Like, she had a big-ass family. And her whole childhood is kind of like a scandalous upbringing. I watched a little bit of the mini series and I watched quite a few documentaries, and they all kind of allude to a scandalous story about her that has really Little to no proof was actually true. Apparently she had a very, very close relationship to her brother, Pablo, and so much so that the family thought it was very inappropriate and went so far as to send him off to make sure they were split up. And this upset her immensely. It was one of those acts that like she truly never forgave her family for. And it was something she'd like hold on to her whole life because her brother was one of her closest confidants and she trusted him so, so much. Now, more than anything, she wanted to escape her family and her family's grasp. So the second she could, she married very, very young. She actually married a Max Factor makeup salesman and basically ran away from her family so that she can get independence. But a long running theme in Maria Felix's life is that anytime something would happen, tragedy was soon to follow. This relationship was a tumultuous one. Now, mind you, this is before she even made it to Hollywood or any kind of like kind of, this is before she even started in acting. She was always a very beautiful girl, a bit of a tomboy, very much so like she was known for wearing pants and not really being very much into like girly things. She even won like a beauty pageant because she was a very beautiful girl. But even more so, like, she had just won it to get the prize, and that was that. Like, she was not about being girly whatsoever. She loved be wearing pants. She loved doing more male activities, which was also, like, looked upon in a very strange way. Like, it raised a lot of eyebrows, especially back then in Mexico, when women were seen to be more, like, subservient to the men. Like, she was not afraid to bite back. But this relationship was a very, very controlled one. Like, her husband had a huge jealousy problem. So much so, like, he'd go to extremes, like, they'd go to the movie theater, and he had to make sure the theater was completely dark. So that he could bring his wife in so she wouldn't be jeered at. You know, like he did not want any man looking at her and made sure they leave, they left before the lights went on to make sure no one saw her. It was kind of extremes. And she would find the employer suffocating and would eventually leave him. Now, her whole story of how she was discovered in Mexican cinema is really, really fascinating. It almost sounds made up. Like things just kind of happened for her. So as the story goes, she was divorced from her husband. She had a son. And he had taken the son away from her. Like he took the son, basically kidnapped him, is what she says. Took her away and like hit him away with his mother. And she had no power to get him back. Like she had no resources or anything to fight the battle to get him. So she was working as a secretary for a plastic surgeon. While this was happening, he was also using her as a model for his plastic surgery services. Like basically advertise, like you could look as beautiful as Maria here. And one thing would lead to another. She would just happen to be in line at like a fair and she was discovered basically on the street. Like someone approached her and said like, do you want to be a movie star? And she just purred at them like, purr, yeah, why not? <laughs> like literally that, she's just like, I mean, I could probably do that, it sounds interesting. They basically snatched her up and put her in films, but she was not received very well going into it. Like she essentially stole her first role. Her co-star Jorge Negrete wanted his girlfriend to star in the role with him. And Maria auditioned for it and got the role immediately. And he was pissed about this. Like he would not let it go. He even went so far to like create rumors about her on set saying she is this big diva, like this big bitch monster from hell. Just because he was just that salty, his girlfriend didn't get the part. And lo and behold, like it did not work because she basically became a sensation overnight. And this was something that would happen time and time again for Maria. Like she would start in something and she just exploded. People were fascinated with her. And like, when you look at pictures of her, it's really not hard to see why. Like she was gorgeous. Like she had these really strong, highly arched eyebrows and like almost cat-like features. Like she had an aura about her that was just fascinating. And the public ate her up. Now her persona in film is really, really fascinating. And I wanna get into more detail with it, but first things first, I gotta roll this hair up and I'll be <laughs> right back. Welcome back. All right, she is all curled out. Now let's start styling her. Ugh, okay, 
So Maria Felix has made her mark on the silver screen in Mexico. And the way she does it is she's portraying a lot of characters that are like really out there for that time. A lot of them had a heavy theme around women that really bossed around men. And this was something that was like really uncommon for that time. Like women roles are usually very subservient and very much just like romantic leads, but never so much where it was like power girl boss kind of roles. And she really broke the mold by doing this. So much that like the public was fascinated with her and with her fame, like I said, tragedy was soon to follow. She was embroiled in scandal after scandal. Like a lot of her whole legacy was made up by the public just making things up about her. Like rumor was really one of the huge makers of her as a star. Unlike others, she relished in it. Like she loved the fact that people were talking about her. Like the wilder, the better. The way she saw it, as long as they were talking about her, like any publicity was good publicity, you know? It just created a mystique around her character. So much so that like, when you compare her to other stars at that time, like Maria Montez or Dolores Del Rio, like they did not have the same mystique that Maria Felix had. So much so that like, they really, really, really want a rivalry to happen between Dolores Del Rio and Maria Felix. And she even will put a squash to this, like they even did a film together. But so much so like she went so far as to say like, look, we're completely different, okay? Like she's a very glamorous, elegant girl. Whereas I'm more of a woman with edge. Like I have a way different kind of persona than her. So just stop, okay? Like we like each other, it's fine. Like we can coexist. But that was such a thing in cinema back then, especially with like tabloid gossip, like women could not be friends, especially women that have like had any kind of like power in their roles. And with her, like it was really fascinating learning more and more about her. Like. She was very insistent on like being a little traditionally unfeminine with her roles. Like they're very strong ladies. She'd wear pants quite often, which was very daring for that time, like taboo. Women did not dress the way she dressed. It was very Katherine Hepburn-esque, you know? Like she was breaking down gender barriers and happy to do so. Like she loved the fact that this scandalized people and it was something she had been doing ever since she was a little girl. Now, Hollywood would come a knocking. Like Cecil B. DeMille had an interest in her. And they brought her all the way out to Hollywood, set up a meeting, and much to their chagrin, she knocked them back. She flat out like heard their offer and basically was wise enough and had the foresight to see like, look, I don't know English. And the roles that are gonna come to me are gonna be ones that are gonna be very belittling. Like she could foresee this happening to her. Like she could see herself falling in the trappings of like a Maria Montez or Dolores Del Rio. Like she didn't want to be a, you know, a Mexican spitfire like the actresses before her. So she decided she heard the deal and was like, nah, I'm good. And just walked out of the office with just such a power move. They were dumbstruck that this woman had the much nerve, had this much nerve to just tell them, no, I think I'm good. From there, she would leave and go on to have a career elsewhere. Strange how it worked. Like anywhere she went, success followed. Like she did a few films in Italy, became a star there. Spain, Argentina, like France. Everywhere she landed, stardom followed and people just became obsessed with her. Like she was a fashion plate. Dior designed custom gowns just for her. Cartier, girl, Cartier <laughs> did the most for her. She was jewelry and glamour obsessed and had custom pieces by Cartier made just for her. Like some of the rumors that surround her life are so fascinating. One of the wildest ones I heard is that the Prince of Egypt actually wanted her for a night and was gonna offer up anything he could, even offered her Nefertiti's crown in exchange for one night with her. And as far as the story goes, she never actually took him up on this offer. But like, just to think, it's like those wild stories you hear in like Sunset Boulevard with like, you know, a chic offering, you know, this much money for one of her silk stockings, like that kind of crazed Hollywood legacy kind of story. Those kind of stories happened with Maria Felix. Like people were awestruck with her. And for her time, like she was a gigantic star that was breaking down barriers in Mexican cinema, like none other before. Like I said, she had taken traditional gender feminine roles and like basically subverted them and created her own archetype for a female character. Like she was a lady boss. Like you kind of compare it to like a Katherine Hepburn or a Joan Crawford in her later years where like these women's pictures that she was making were fully just like embroiling the basically taking control of the public interest, especially with women. Like she was a hugely popular actress for women because it's just like fantasy play, being able to imagine yourself in these kind of roles. I'm gonna tease the rest of this and I'll be right back. <laughs> All right, we are back. I have it all teased out. I even started smoothing it a little bit because it's a vintage hairstyle. Y'all see me do this a bunch of times. So, Maria Felix. All right, so, where was I? Yes, I remember now. Okay, so to add context to the story, when Maria Felix was married to her first husband, you know, the real douchebag one, 
she found solace in listening to a radio program hosted by none other than Agustin Lara, who was a great singer at that time, like an acclaimed songwriter. But this is one of the things she found solace in, like she loved listening to this program. She even told her friends, I'm gonna marry this man one day. And lo and behold, as she was at the height of her career, she did. Yes, she ended up marrying him. And it was like a storybook wedding, okay? Like they broadcast it everywhere. It was like the wedding of the century. And all things would not be well in paradise for her and Agustin. Well, first things first, it started off wonderful. Like he wrote amazing iconic songs about her, like Maria Bonita. And there's another one too, but that's probably the most famous, famous one. And like it put her into like icon status. Like everyone loves this song and everyone thinks of her when they hear it. It's like, girl, that's what you want, okay? It's like a theme song. <laughs> but all was not well in paradise for the couple because soon enough, similar traits of her ex would show up in him. He became very, very, very jealous. And when everything came to a head, she eventually had to leave him. And it didn't stop there, girl. It got even more dramatic. He famously tried to shoot her. Yes, he tried to shoot her. A scandal was abound and Maria Felix just found her way in it every single time. One good thing did come out of this marriage. Like Maria had worked her way through the social ladder so much so that she had gotten revenge on her ex beforehand. She basically took back her son. She flew over and tricked her mother-in-law into handing over her son and she got her son back. Like she was determined. She never forgot about him and wanted to get him back and did. As she would leave this marriage, she would soon enter another one with the most unlikely of people, her co-star that she had a famous rivalry with. Jorge Negrete had come back into her life and they had married. And it actually turned out to be a fairly good marriage. The only thing is they were rocked by tragedy yet again when he would sadly pass away. Like, oh, honey, she could not catch a break, all right? Like every single time happiness came to her, something else would go wrong. Her husband would pass away and then her father and mother would pass away shortly, soon after that, which became a huge hole in her heart because she knew she could never reconcile with them because they had since disowned her for being a movie star. Like they could not cope with it. Like they were very strict and very religious and did not like the attention she was getting as a movie star. Like her relationship with her family is very, very, very storied, okay? Like that brother we mentioned before, he had passed away and she swore up and down to the end of her life that he was murdered. She never forgiven her family for it and the way that he was treated. It's like a running theme where just tragedy would hit her and rock her for the rest of her life. Now, come the 90s, Maria Felix is basically an established icon. Like she had run the course for a career. She was, at this point, iconic. She was a grand diva of Mexican cinema and everyone knew, knew her as such. As her son was in his 60s, he would pass away from a sudden heart attack. And this rocked her in a way that she would never recover from. It's one of the things that like she carried with her for the rest of her life. Like she adored her son. It really messed her up. And as it seemed like she was taking a victory lap in her career and she was really starting to get her flowers for being this icon, she would sadly pass away in her sleep as well. But she left behind such a legacy of basically breaking down gender norms and creating a whole persona on screen that had never been seen before. Like her mark has been left. Not to mention like the scandal she got herself embroiled in, iconic. And the fact that like she knew enough and had enough savvy and moxie to know that like anything that's said about me is just gonna add to my legacy and I'm not gonna fight any of it. Like it's fine, let the people talk because at the end of the day, the fiction is more interesting than the truth. Okay, I think we're just about there. I just have to spoof some things out and clean it up a little bit in the back. And we have our hairstyle. We have the famous hairstyle, the vintage set with that beautiful spit curl on the side. Very signature her. She rocked this throughout her life. She's super stylish. All right, now I'm gonna smooth it out and I'll be right back with the final results. <laughs> Welcome back, La Doña has arrived. Yes, that was her nickname for her most famous role, like the role she's synonymous with, okay? Doña Barbara, yes! Oh my gosh. I have to say, this is like super stylish, okay? Like I love the vintage flair with like the signature spit curl on the side. Like she was super stylish. I have to say, this is just the tip of the iceberg as far as stories about her go. Like there are rumors that I will not get into. Y'all can discuss that amongst yourself, some of those most salacious rumors. I'm not gonna get into that because I have to keep this video monetized still. Oh, I forgot my most famous story. Quick bit, quick bit. Okay, so the famous artist Diego Rivera painted her once, right? I think they're great friends, her and Frida Kahlo. Yes, well, he presented her with a gift and upon seeing it, she was insulted. She thought it was disgusting. It's because it was like admission to her that he was in love with her because he had painted her without, like he painted her in clothing that was totally sheer and you could see all of her bits. And she later like recommissioned it to have everything like covered up. 
and she sold it to Juan Gabriel later on in life. But I just love that. Like, she had the nerve to tell Diego Rivera himself, like, thanks, I hate it. <laughs> Iconic. Okay. Yeah, I adored this. Like, I loved learning more about her. Like, she was so fascinating. It, she was fabulous, okay? And she stayed fabulous. And I'm so happy we could bring some light to her legacy today. Yes! Oh my gosh, there's another iconic brunette you want to see. Be sure and comment them down below. I'm always listening and iconic blondes as well. I love to get your submissions. Now, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, bye. Now hit the outro. watch iconic blondes the gabor sisters or see me transform a really cheap wig from amazon that's supposedly drag queen ready come on click it you know you want to if you don't click it i'll slash your tires so click it